This is Kate Swanell for the MJA and our first podcast of the year is with Emeritus Professor in Public Health, Stephen Leader. Morning, Stephen. Okay. Um, we have a new Federal Health Minister, Susan Lee. Yep, Does, do. do. you have any hope that things may improve in the next year or so under the new Minister? Uh, yes, I do. I believe that she brings to the portfolio a really significant set of experiences in relation to social policy development. She's mm -hmm. worked in education where her energy in seeking community consultation and modifying ideas in the light of that uh, bodes well. So, um, Talk to me about this bulk billing change that the government are making from the 19th of January. Mm. I mean, is this just the co-payment by another name? Or? Uh, it is the co-payment by another name and uh, uh, because the purpose of the co-payment was never clear, mm. it was to raise money because they were running out for healthcare or to raise money for medical research or simply to whip the backside of people and say, no, you've got to pay to send you a price signal because you're yes. so thick you can't understand that paying taxes and the Medicare levy and the private health insurance premium, that's not the price signal, that's a, a non-price signal. Yeah. I mean, how dumb are we? So why do we need a price signal when we've got, already got three one. of them already? Exactly. So I know when every time you get a prescription filled you pay money. Yeah. Uh, more than you should, in actual fact, if we yeah. were smart about buying generic drugs, so it's just another matter. But um, yeah. no, it's, it's been a complete schmozzle, and um, God knows how long it'll last. But, but the people who are bearing the brunt of it are general practice. And, yes. Uh, cutting down on the short consultations, I mean, I, I imagine that this is because they're worried that people are treating patients like sausages and pumping them through at you know, six minute intervals and mm. charging a lot of money. Well, mm, there are ways of dealing that with that if you if you really regard it and measure it as a problem. Yeah. But let's suppose you're the GP and I go to you and, and he or she, I go to you and you say to me, Steve, we've got to have some tests. Yep. So the examination history, the rest of it might take 20 minutes. So I go and have the tests and God willing I come back with them in an envelope and I give them to you or they transmit it to you and when I go back to see you, you say, well, whatever you had, it's nothing serious, on your way, yep. get over it, three minutes. So that's actually a worthwhile consultation. Yes, it is. And it's part of the, the larger thing, but if you're going to punish people for doing that, so instead of you know, running it that way, you say to me, I say, well, no, why don't you think of the four test at the Sydney Cricket Ground? So you extend the, oh, well, it's great fun, but you get paid more for an inefficient consultation. Yes, like yes. And being punished for efficiency. So it's all very murky, very murky. Why do you think GPs are being targeted like this? I mean, specialists, for example, can charge the earth. They don't have to bulk bill. Um, I think because general practitioners are a fairly minor political voice, I don't mm. mean that with any disrespect. Mm. Uh, it's a structural problem because specialists are aggregated into specialty groups. Yep. They work in big institution hospitals. They have... Um, fairly aggressive marketing of their professional interests and fees and yeah. the rest of it. But so you try whipping them, look what happened when they tried to change the fees on cataract operations a couple of years ago. Well you know thought at the end of Christendom they won the day. No. But but you see, I mean I think uh, being sort of not at the high end of the pecking order, I mean you don't see many GPs driving around in Ferraris or you know, running six macadamia farms in New South Wales, North Coast, or any of this sort of stuff, or mixing it with uh, yeah. uh, the hoi polloi, they don't have the political purchase. Mm. So you can give them a bit of a clip over the year and nobody sort of will vote you out of office yet. Yeah. So, I mean, I would hope the new minister comes in and says, you know, like Pope Francis when he assumed office, they said to him, what do you think about this? Oh, I've got more important things to think about and pushed it to one side. What are the more important things? Well, I think, first of all, there's a real need to look at the 
the health system critically to say where are the major inefficiencies. Right. Because we, we, I, I don't have an argument with the idea that we need to be more efficient and more effective in the use of money. Mm -hmm. and money's not going to get, uh, there's not going to be more money available. It's just the global economy. It's got nothing to do with what Labor did or any of the rest of it. The global economy is not on a growth trajectory at the moment. Yeah. And of being a resource dependent economy as Australia is, we're not in, we're not looking to 2015 being a rich year. Yep. So we've got to be serious about this business of, of not wasting money in the health system and you know, we need to look at not reimbursing for things that don't work and there are a whole bunch of them uh, and I think that there's a, a need for, for, for serious thought. You know, this is not something done up here mm -hmm. that's independent of the practicing profession or indeed the public. It's got to be, this is why I think the new minister's uh, experience in developing policy, which is truly consultative but clear in its direction, yep. uh, we're saying, ladies and gentlemen, we're interested in achieving efficiencies in the health system. Mm -hmm. And there are some things that we do that we shouldn't do, and you know what they are, and I know what they are. What are we going to do about it? Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I may be pie in the sky, but at another level, it's, it's feasible. What about information technology? Well, what about it? Um, <laughs> we don't... I mean, it's, it's very complicated. The healthcare system is indeed very complex. Yes. And trying... And we saw this with the pay, pay, personally controlled electronic medical record. A uh, bright idea, looks fantastic, and then you run into the realities. Yeah. So... Um, but um, I'd have to say, I think we're a long way behind in comparison with, say, the banks or the airlines or much of industry, commerce and industry. And this may be an area where we're going to have to go into hock a bit uh, to put the necessary investment to get. Yeah. Uh, things, the good things are happening. I mean, the, there is progressive linkage of medical records across hospitals, for example. Yes. GPs. I can remember 10 years ago when basically computers were uncommon. Well, now it's uncommon to go into general practice without one. Without one. Yeah. So the potentiality is there, but it should surely be a priority to be politically and politically managed. It's a it's an investment. It yeah. needs to be seen as an investment because you may not save money this year. It might cost you a lot of money this year, but but the long-term consequences. And it improves people's health. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it improves accessibility and quality of life in, a, in all sorts of ways. That's readily demonstrable. You mentioned earlier um, pharmaceutical pricing. What needs to happen? Because we do seem to be paying a lot more than other countries do for... We do seem to be paying a lot more. And there have been quite a few studies done now showing that, um, for example, the pricing on generics in Australia is higher than perhaps it should be um, and I don't dispute that groups like the Pharmaceutical Benefits Advisory Committee and the rest of it have have done well, have done well mm -hmm. um, and Australia has a very good track record for not subsidising meds that uh, are not effective. But two things are happening. We're seeing increasingly the supply of generics, statins and the rest of it. Yep. Where I, the estimates from people, economists like Philip Clark and Melbourne and others, is that we're paying far too much. The other big challenge in the pharmaceutical thing are all these new generation of, of designer drugs for yeah. cancer and related conditions. And they cost a bomb. Mm -hmm. you know, it's nothing to spend 30,000 bucks a year on someone on one of these new drugs for melanoma or whatever. Yep. How are we going to pay for that? That really requires some careful policy deliberation. Uh, so it's another area where you know, investment of energy in health policy. Yeah. There's some savings to be made, but there are also some questions about financial viability of new pharmaceutical and 
procedural therapies. I thought you, you made an interesting point in um, your Australian doctor piece uh, about our community being a caring community. Hmm. I mean, it's, it's like you know, breathing and eating. We sort of take it for granted a bit. Yeah. Um, a lot, I think. And uh, it's easy for people to pursue a political agenda that says, oh, it's the only thing to worry about is the economy because everybody's basically self-interested and mm. this sort of stuff. Um, well, you know, the assumptions underlying that are truly bizarre, but um, a lot of people believe it. But mm. it's when you have a crisis like the mm, Martin Place siege, yes, and suddenly, bingo, everybody brings flowers. Yes. And so, you know, some people who pursue a sort of economic fundamentalist approach who wouldn't predict that so many people would pay for a bunch of flowers and put them on the pavement. Yeah. Think, whoa, what the heck's going on here? But it's, a, it's just like a lot of hidden talent. Yes. The caring nature of, of what we do. And I, for years I've always said, well, why don't the politicians say to people, your taxes and your Medicare levy are doing good things for people who can't afford care. We need to be reminded of that. Yeah. There needs to be a story, a narrative, that says this is what it means to be Australian in the context of health care. And we look after the other guy. No, we look out for them. Yeah. We're not going to give them a, no, a velvet robes or anything, but we're going to make sure if they need health care, they get it. Yep. So, you know, all this jibber-jabber about co-payments and things, it's all floss. And people are not being reminded. And the price signals are the most important thing. The most important thing is that we, as a community, value health, and we value our fellow citizens, and we're willing to make a public investment to that end. Yep. It's not a story you hear very often, but it happens to be true. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I think we need to hang on to it because it's precious and uncommon and uh, good stuff. Sounds like a good place to stop, Steve. Mm -hmm. Let's hope Susan Lay's Lee is on board. Let's hope. Thanks. Great.